KHI is a state-based organization whose goal is to try to inform policymakers on issues related to health of people in our state. We're a diverse group of people that are uh, social scientists, uh, people with a clinical background, with a scientific background, and communication and business background. We try to take on issues that affect the health of Kansans and we look at everything from how the public health system is organized to obesity issues to insurance issues, implementation of uh, the ACA in our state. We try to help people understand how many different things in our state, in our communities, in our lives affect our health. And the great thing about health impact assessments is it draws those connections to health and well-being to all sorts of issues that may not at first appear to be related to health. It all starts with a question. You have to ask the question, what about health? Kansas Health Institute has always been looking for innovative or creative ways to inform policymaking at the state and local level. And since 2010, we have embarked on doing health impact assessments. I was very fortunate to lead uh, up to date five uh, projects in this area. For me, health impact assessment really reminds like a puzzle, but the puzzle with the instructions. So you go through those steps, and at the end, you have a picture. So in terms of the health impacts, you will see the picture of health or what can be potentially impacts on health. We really want people, policymakers, and community members to ask, what about health? Should we consider health in this decision making? And this is the first very important step. What's next? Where do we go from here? Health impact assessment have been done in collaboration with multiple partners and stakeholders. The steps that are defined by the practice standards, and those are six steps ranging from screening, when you really identify, should you be doing an HIA? Would this policy benefit from that process? Because not all policies necessarily require health impact assessment. Usually it's those that the health is missing as a part of the conversation, or that they could have um, diverse health implications could benefit from the HIA. So really do the screening as the first step. The next step is scoping when you really decide what are those issues that you need to focus on or try to assess. And usually you inform your scoping through discussion with community members and policy makers as well as research. And then the third step of health impact assessment, that's where you really do the assessment. So you really bring literature review and data assessment and stakeholder perspective. And then you you move into the recommendations. So based on your findings, you develop uh, strategies, practical strategies that can be used to maximize potential health benefits and mitigate potential health risks. The next stage will be reporting, where you really produce the report. But what's very interesting about HIAs, you actually can do reporting throughout the process. The process is not very linear, because if you are informing the state legislation and uh, your report is not done yet, but there is a hearing on this particular bill, you do need to be ready and to inform the process. The last but very important step is monitoring and evaluation. It allows HA practitioners to understand if the project were carried out according to the standards and if it made a difference. One aspect that really makes health impact assessments unique is the opportunity to bring voices of communities into the assessment or into the perspective. These people are usually interested in evidence and data, and they do want to make evidence-informed decisions. They see HIA as a tool that can help them get the information they need to be an effective decision maker. Also, those people are usually passionate about health, about community health and they do want to serve their communities, they want to maximize the resources they have because in a lot of cases, health impact assessment can help to prioritize resources and really address the issues that need to be addressed. Wichita Transit System is extremely important to our community. However, not many people 
understand that. People in our community depend on the transit system. So it's their lifeline to their appointments, medical appointments, to their employment, to school. At the time, I and others on the council were looking for every possible reason to help people understand the importance of the transit system to the larger community, even if they themselves didn't ride it. We were interested in any kind of work or study or documentation that would help us build the case for why transit is so very important. Wichita's population is 386,000, the metro area is closer to half a million, and helping that magnitude of people understand the transit issue is an ongoing communications challenge. And having this kind of information that we can share with people really is eye-opening. We worked very closely with the partners in the project to define it from the very beginning and then to involve community stakeholders in the process so that we identified early on what the questions were we were going to be asking and assessing in order to develop a set of findings at the end that would be useful. There were really two major aspects to the finding. One had to do with the impacts on health of individual riders who already use the transit system. There was another set of findings and recommendations that had to do with shifting people from cars to transit who don't already ride transit. And one of those large health impacts has to do with air quality. The fewer cars that we have on the street and the more people we have on transit, the better our air quality is and in Wichita, that's very significant because we are very close to going out of attainment, which means that the EPA will penalize us for our air quality, which has significant financial consequences, but in addition, there are health consequences related to air quality problems. And so over time, we want to also help people understand that on days where Wichita is close to violating what's called the ozone standard, if we put out alerts, we have offered in this past year free transit days to encourage people to shift from their cars to taking the bus that day. So that's an example of something we've initiated as a result of the health impact assessment. In terms of uh, the policymakers' involvement, in a health impact assessment, I do think it's important one or two of the policymakers be involved in the process so that they understand it, so they can see firsthand what the themes and the issues are that are coming out of it. You're not waiting till the very end to release a final report. You do that, but you also have some touch points along the way that you can be sharing and reminding your colleagues. Um, that this process is ongoing and that it is going to be providing helpful data to encourage them to be looking forward to receiving the final report so that they're thinking about incorporating it into their decision-making process. We are still using the information from the health impact assessment, continuing to educate the broader community about how the transit system's availability has consequences or impacts beyond just what you would think of as transportation from point A to point B. In an, in an ideal world, when policymakers or legislators are crafting regulation or policy change or making funding decisions, it would be wonderful if they would ask, how does this impact health? And certainly a health impact assessment can help us answer that question. Medical marijuana in Kansas, the issue has been around for uh, several years now. Historically, we have seen people be very opposed to the idea of even discussing marijuana because it is illegal at the federal level and obviously continues to be at the state level. I think, though, the conversation is starting to change in Kansas, and that's, that's happening in conjunction with the national conversation about potential health benefits of medical marijuana. I was driven by the fact that over the years, we haven't had any hearings on medical marijuana in Kansas, and I was 
frankly getting fed up with the fact that we couldn't openly discuss a topic because of the political sensitivities of it. So I knew we needed kind of a third party neutral place and organization to, to help us dive into the issues. Thankfully, the Health Institute's right across the street from the Capitol, and I've always appreciated the uh, lunch series that the Health Institute puts on related to various topics. And so that was my introduction to the Health Institute uh, in the first place. But one of those lunches was focused on the health impact assessment results for corporate agriculture and corporate farming. We had Republicans and Democrats around the table hearing unbiased information, and that just allowed for uh, I think a more honest and genuine conversation about the issue. One of the things I really like about the HIA is that it brings together lots of stakeholders. I've been having conversations with my colleagues you know, uh, in, in committees as well as outside the committee, um, really gauging their perception of it. And so um, I think new information being presented through the media and through health organizations along with the personal stories shared by families means that more people are receptive to hearing about the topic. In this time when we're facing uh, increasingly smaller budgets, especially in the legislature, we've already had to cut our budgets, which includes cutting our legislative research department's budget. We have fewer and fewer resources and people to help us understand and research issues. I think people's support for health impact assessments will grow as they see the results of those impact assessments being built into policies. And so I think it's incumbent upon me to really take what's found in the medical marijuana health impact assessment and apply it towards the bills that, that I'm drafting. For me, it really all starts with a question. I think we need to ask the question, what about health? 